Hello everyone, welcome to Toffee Tube. My name is Toffee and today on Toffee Tube we're going to be discussing Cannes Film Festival 2022 red carpet outfits. As this year there are a lot of movies to be watched, like always, I cannot wait to consider its fashion part and the outfits that the stars wear. For this upload, which is a part 1 video of some remarkable looks, I explain why some of the outfits rocked and why some of them missed the mark. Please stay and watch the video till the end and don't forget to hit the like button and subscribe to see more content like this. Catherine Langford showed up with a Georgette silver gown from Prada. The gown has a bow and train detail from the back. The embroidery and sequin detail made the dress so elegant. The back slit made it easier for her to walk. I wish the inner hemline of the bow could have some special finishing or maybe a little more effort to make it look more, you know, chicer. Like using some lining or layering or anything that could hide the inner layer of the fabric so that we couldn't be able to see the sewing point of the bow tie attached to the original dress. The v neckline is great, the razzle dazzling crystals are eye catching and stealing attention. I love how she created such a look with short hair. Overall, she was so sexy in this look. Jasmine Tooks showed up with a sexy yellow strapless pleated ball gown from Tony Ward's Haute Couture. It is nicely billowing on the ground and it's not just a puffy gown standing on the red carpet, you know. It's flowing, it's alive. Although the designer is originally Lebanese Italian, the body pleated part reminds me of the Japanese folding fans, which are dramatic. The embellishing on the upper part kind of separated the pleated part of the look from the simple strapless part of the gown, which is so thrilling to look at. Like it was a simple dress at first, then some fairy came and created some magic with their wand and bam, now it is what it is. Why did I suddenly reminisce about Cinderella? The draped fabric stood well on the gown and made some good looking ruffles. Overall, I like Jasmine's look. It's so up level and chic, the color pairing with her skin tone really made it eye-catching. Lori Harvey attended the can opening ceremony red carpet with a yellow Alexander Wotia gown. It's strapless and its fabric has been implemented to give the inspiration of feathers. It has a big jeweled stone on the waist and the fabrics are layered. The fabric color and her skin tone are well matched together. I may feel that she just looks a little short in this gown. I guess she was personally eager to wear a puffy one like she really wanted it. Cause from a designer's point of view, the puffs could have been less in order to prevent her from seeming short. Overall, a puffy gown is a good choice for the can red carpet. It's chic, it's modest, and it's perfectly implemented. Eva Lingoria showed up with a black Alberta Ferretti chiffon slip dress from the Fall Winter 2022 collection. A sheer dress with spaghetti straps. The ruffles are giving the proper vibe. The dress billowing on the ground is perfect. The floral appliques nicely hit the stuff if you know what I mean. The combination of the sheer, the fabric and the applique all together made the whole look eye-catching. It's like the more you watch it, the more you get curious for details. She completed her look with a black jewel choker which was chic and proper to this look. Her makeup and jewelry are more than enough. I believe she did very well. The look is so satisfying. She also had another look from Cristina Ottaviano's recent collection, a metallic off-shouldered ombre embroidered bustier gown. The reflection of the fabric made it so eye-catching. Among all other looks in Cannes, this one actually was one of the unique ones. Although it's not sheer, it's not puffy, it's not belowing the ground, but it's properly giving the vibe. Leonie Hanna attended to the red carpet with a sexy pink tool ball gown from Nicole Felicia Couture. At first, it reminded me of Ariana Grande and Kendall Jenner's tool gowns. Maybe it's because of the fabric and the color. Then when you watch it carefully, you figure out the details on the perfect design. The puffy flower inspired shoulders that are attached to the plunging neckline and also the skin reveal around the bodice lead you to the conclusion that this look has a lot to say. The mini tool skirt is perfectly synchronized with the bodies and also gives the proper vibe. The back open bodies also makes a good balance between the upper and down parts of the body. It doesn't hurt the eyes and makes sure everything is in its proper place. The gown is so much perfect that even if the long flowing skirt was not there, you could also love the pinky girly sexy mini gown as it was. But now that there is a long puffy train attached to it, it seems so dramatic and chic. It is perfectly showcased on the red carpet. The shoes and jewelry are enough, she didn't stick to extra accessories and made her look perfect by observing the balance. Julian Moore attended with a black satin Bottega Veneta gown. While I personally anticipated her to wear Tom Ford as usual, she surprised us with a Bottega look. 
The fabric is tight on the shoulder and the V-plunging neckline is perfect on the body till it gets to the waist. Although the silhouette is eye-catching, it kind of gives us the feeling of shortness. I wish the satin sewing line was a little upper. The gown has two pockets and she put her hand in one to make a gesture, which was cool. Also her silver emerald necklace was a good match to her style. I guess the gown could go better on her. It has pros and cons at the same time. Everything has pros and cons. No wonder. But every time I look at it more, I wish the waistline was a little higher. The first day of Cannes, Aishwarya Rai showed up with a Falguni Shane Peacock look. The Indian designer prepared a nice embroidered crop top and skirt with a sari that is a special signature of India's fashion. The sari has a rich decor and a good fur detail at the end, which she made good advantage of it as such good posing in her looks. The look is chic, it's expensive, it's got a lot of eye-catching details, it's elegant, and it literally brings the luxury at its finest. I hope to see more looks like this from her. Then she appeared with an oversized hot pink pantsuit from Valentino, which I wish she didn't. The collar has two purposeless straps that made the look sloppy. She could at least tie them. She left her hair loose, so it kind of steals the look's spotlight and brings brings too much attention. As the third look, she showed up on the red carpet with a black Dolce Gabbana gown. It contains a lot of colorful flowers from one shoulder to one high slit. Color contrast is good, the silhouette is perfect for the can red carpet. I guess the only problem with this look is the flowers. The size of flowers gathering together kind of bursts the bubble of the dress. They could be smaller or a little less. Aishwarya Rai has always been one of the chicest celebrities on red carpets such as Ken. I personally anticipated more from her. Maria Mozerli wore a butterfly-inspired gown from the recent collection of the Russian brand Yanina Couture. The concentration of the dress is mostly on the bodice. It is influenced by a butterfly. The ruffles are implemented as the butterfly wings and a big purple bow is formed on the waistline. It kind of distracts the main concept of the dress. You are either focusing on the bow that is flaring down or the butterfly that is exaggeratedly done on the upper body. The bow kind of made her look short. Maybe if the fabric was a little thinner, it could better work. I wish she had a better posing so you could have a better vision from the dress. It's more like showcasing the jewelry. I don't know. I believe she made it up with her second look. A puff sleeve off the shoulder black gown is containing a cinch bag and a simple waist belt. At first, when you look at it from the back, you kind of anticipate having the same symmetric design for the front. It nicely suits the body, it perfectly belowing the ground, the fabric is eye-catching and overall she looked good in it. Elle Fanning attended to the red carpet in Giorgio Armani powder pink strapless dress. I say without wasting the time. This look is perfect. The fish cut gown, the strapless bodies, the color, everything will match together and made a perfect style. Also, the hairstyle is perfect for this look. The tool gives a fairy tale vibe. Although there is no contrast between the fabric and skin color, it doesn't hurt the eyes while you even want to watch it more. The embroidery on the bodies is pleasing, not too less, not too much. And it was perfectly done as it resulted in a good shape of the design. I really liked it. The pregnant Adriana Lima attended the can red carpet with a black ballman dress containing a baby bomb bearing cutout, long sleeves and fabrics draping from sleeve parts and the belly. The v-neck collar has been created from the fabrics, one from the left and the other from the right crossing each other and then making the accentuated shoulders. They're well stuck to the back and created a nice blowing look. Also, the draped fabric from the sleeves made the studs dramatic. The main concentration is on the bare belly. I guess she really meant her baby boy at on this red carpet as well. The fabric that is draped from the belly also acts like finishing to this design. It's proper and nicely syncs with the whole look. I like this style. It's enough, it's creative, and it nicely suits Adriana. I got so happy watching her in this look. The Indian actress Deepika Padukone showed up at the opening of the can red carpet with a full traditional Indian look from Sabia Sachi Mukherjee. She wore a rich embellished sari dress. The sari, which for Indian people is an important cultural symbol and an everyday garment at the same time, mainly contains three areas. A central field, inner and outer end pieces, and the borders. The end pieces and borders usually help to balance the positioning around the body. Should be mentioned that sari is also common in some other Asian countries like Nepal, Sri Lanka, Bangladesh, and Pakistan. Although Aishwarya's sari look was a fair end piece that separately completed her look, Deepika Padukone's look included a sari draping from her shoulder. It's satisfying to see Indian celebrities appreciate their culture and traditions. 
I like how she completed her look with a headband and maximal pieces of jewelry. The fabric stripes is giving the vibe. The black corset is nicely synchronized with the whole look. The embroidered details have made this look seem so elegant and expensive. I think she was so successful in her first appearance on this year's red carpet. Tony Guerin attended the red carpet with a gown from the Philosophy Fall 2022 collection. The white dress is made of moir silk and has some good embellishing feather details on the shoulder part. The side cutouts took it out of simplicity. The symmetry is well done and is considered a glamorous look. Although it's not a puffy or trainy gown, although the main detail in this look is its feathers and you don't see extra embroidery, attached stones, crystals or blah blah blah, it's still one of the chicest looks of the can red carpet till now. Well, I guess that's it. Stay notified, Cam Festival has not finished yet, so I will upload further looks reviews and I cannot wait to see what the stars are going to wear in the next appearances. Please let me know what you think in the comments. If you like this video, hit the like button and subscribe to see more content like this. So, see you soon.